Welcome back to Southampton International Boat Show 2022. And this week, we're bringing you an interview with Will Crockford. So welcome to our Southampton Boat Show and we're here on the pontoons and William, Will Crockford, uh, his boat behind us, he's a brave young man, he's going to sail this boat single-handed around the world uh, in 2023 uh, into 24. But to make life a little bit more complicated, he's going non-stop and he's going fossil free. Fossil free. Yeah. Fossil free. No fossil fuels whatsoever. Brave young All man. Yeah, very brave young man. So we're going to have a little chat with him and get a little bit more detail. You've set yourself rather a big challenge. Uh, yeah, so I'm sailing around the world solo next year as part of the Global Solo Challenge. Um, and the big part about what I'm doing different with that is um, I'm doing 100% electric and 100% fossil fuel free. So I won't have any fossil fuel on board. So I'm cooking electric, I'm heating electric, I'm generation like for movement within engine is all electric. Tell us about the course that you're going to take uh, around the world. Yeah, so we leave from northern Spain, Acarona, um, September next year. I think with my group on end of September, so the 30th of September, we head south um, and then take the trade winds around. So we go around South Africa, uh, South like Australia, New Zealand, South America, and then back up the Atlantic. Um, hopefully to finish within about up to six months, really. Okay, and you go back to Spain. Back to northern Spain. Yeah. So we're running on the IAC rules, um, which is you have to leave and depart from the same port. Um, and you've got to leave all the big capes. And all the big capes port and all of that. So for this and way so around. And so this is actually single-handed as well. Single-handed. So the same as the global um, Golden Globe and the Vendée. But this is a completely new race, it's the first inaugural race is next year. And tell us a little bit about the boat. So Echo Zulu is uh, Freya's 45. She was designed by German Freyers and, uh, and then built by Carol Marine in America. She spent her early life sailing in the lakes of America um, and doing a little bit of racing. She's designed as a racer cruiser, so the, the owner that had her commissioned wanted a boat that he could race, um, but also be comfortable for having the family on. Um, then she moved out into the Atlantic Ocean on the American coast of the Atlantic Ocean and did a lot of racing there. Uh, it's got a background of Ostar and Fastnets and, and then the, my, the previous owner to her imported her from America 10 years ago um, where he then raced in the Fastnets and various different races around the Solent um, and done a lot of racing with her. I took ownership in March of this year. So tell me a little bit about how you're going to generate enough electricity to get yourself uh, through those gloomy days down in the South Atlantic and round Cape Horn. Yeah, so we're generating enough electricity to, so I'm putting a thousand, meg, a thousand watts of solar, which is a megawatt, um, both through, either, well, we're trying to work out how to do that best. So it's either going to be through the sails, through panels on the deck or through a solar arch. Um, I'm working with a company called Solar Technology to provide with solar panels for all of this. Um, and then I'm also working with Remoran who have supplied me with two hydro generators so I can generate electricity from, from movement through the water. And you reckon that will give you enough, do you, to have yeah, so your auto helm system? And yeah, so with everything on board that will give me 1.6 megawatt, yep. um, which should give me enough generation to keep all my 12 volt systems charged up. And then for for, gener for the electric motor and my cooking and everything, I've got two four banks of 48 volts. So roughly how much storage do you have in 12 volt and 48 volt? So with the 12 volt, we're looking at potentially running 800 amp hours. Um, we haven't actually calculated the storage for the 48 volt. Um, I know it's going to be two banks even at the back, but we need to basically measure space um, and go from there. But we're looking at ten probably 20 batteries. Um, and it would probably say 200 amp hours in each of those, so we're probably looking at 4,000 amp hours. You did just touch on the fact that you're going to have an electric motor. What uh, brand of uh, engine are you going to go for? There's a very tough question. So we're still working on that one. We're in talks with a lot of companies. Um, as you can probably understand, there's a quite a few, a lot of interest from electric um, motor companies about getting on board. So we're in talks with a couple of those to work out which one which best suits me for what I'm doing 
and, and what sort of deal we can and sponsorship partnership we can come up with really. I have to say you've only got 12 months to go haven't you till the start it doesn't sound like an awful long time to get this boat uh, ready to go. No and I've actually got even less because in May next year I'm racing solo around Iceland as part of the Royal Western Yacht Club's uh, round Iceland race which is again it's an inaugural race. And where does that leave from? Uh, so that leaves from Plymouth up around Iceland leaving Iceland to port I believe or it might be to starboard. Um, it's similar to what the Yamokas were doing this year and then back to Plymouth and the idea is to get the boat 100% ready for that race um, so we've actually, I've actually only got till probably mid-April to get the boat complete. And just touch on what experience you have. So I've sailed for 23 years now. I started sailing dinghies in the local lake uh, when I was 10. Um, I've spent a lot of time at sea, did all my dinghies during the school years and everything. And then when I was in my late teens, I went to Australia and New Zealand and sailed and crewed on boats in the with Sunday Islands, Great Barrier Reef. And then I spent a bit of time on an America's Cup boat in Auckland Bay as a tourist boat, uh, crew on that as well. So yeah, so we've, I've, I've sailed most of my life, but mainly as a cruiser. And what's your longest passage? The longest passage would be two weeks so far. That's it. It's got, yeah. got, got, so got, got a, got a, go got a long way, got a long way to go. And the longest time I've soloed for is about four days. So yeah. I've got a lot of training, but I, I enjoy being on the boat on my own. I, I absolutely love it. And actually my, my boat is set up and will be set up for make my life as easy as possible. I'm working closely with my riggers and sail makers to get that all tied together. How do you feel you're going to cope with the, uh, the mental uh, stability for, for keeping yourself going for so long on your own? That's going to be a tough point and that's something that I think a lot of people don't focus on when it comes to these. A lot of people focus on what you're doing but don't actually focus on the mental um, pressures and mental strife of that and I think it's going to be really hard. Um, I'm lucky enough to be sponsored by Iridium and AST to, so they provide all my satcoms and all my communication which is vital because it means I can talk to my family and my girlfriend and all of that sort of stuff and to check in with them and just so when I'm feeling low I can I can now I've got someone to talk to and there will be points of feeling low and there'll be points of me going why am I doing this um, but it's just making sure I can get hold of people and talk through that really and and Karen who's my PR she she also works in sort of um, that sort of sector as well a little bit sort of talking to people so I've got someone there that's very close as my shore team be able to talk to and understand what I'm doing to and ask the right questions to make me feel good. One last question then um, how far is it and uh, how long do you anticipate it taking you? It's about 27,000 miles yeah. if you go the absolute categoric shortest route which not many people can because of the weather it's about 24,000 but a route is estimated around about 27,000 miles give or take for weather um, and with this boat I'm targeting 175 days it's about six, just shy, well, just over six months, but it, I, we're, in, we're hoping I can get in below that. Um, but I always like to kind of worst case scenario and then come in better. Well, um, we certainly wish you the best of luck. Thank you and very much. I'm really going to look forward to following this, actually, because I'm, I'm quite into this uh, electrification of boats and making yeah. them uh, eco-friendly and things. So no, yeah, well, you'll have to come back once we've actually done it and oh, have to. a look around and give it all. Yeah. And follow me on Instagram um, and to all, your, all your followers. Yeah. Follow, uh, look yeah. me up on Instagram. Everything yeah. goes on there and my website as well. Yeah. So. Okay, and we'll make a big thing of it when you uh, set off. Lovely. Look thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Bye. Cheers.